British Triathlon, proudly partnered by GE. Imagination at work. Hello and welcome to the heart of London's business district for what is without doubt the newest and fastest addition to the sporting calendar, the GE Canary Wharf Triathlon. This is the second instalment of our Super Series coverage. We've already seen the elite women, so now it's the men's turn to mix it with the city gents and show them what their day jobs are all about. Fast, furious, frenzied. All the kinds of adjectives we would deploy in describing the women's races. With a 400 meter swim, 10K bike and 2K run, the only way to race a super sprint is flat out, which means action and drama guaranteed. In a race of less than 30 minutes, transition is naturally a bigger percentage of the time on course. And it was efficiency in transition that proved a big factor in the victory of Australia's Erin Densham. The competitive men's field will be racing a knockout format with two qualifying heats before the final. The first eight go through from each heat, plus four fastest losers. This event is round four of the British Triathlon Super Series and the overall leader, Matt Sharp, faces his toughest test so far. Some pretty shrewd operators have come from overseas, ready to seal a big city deal of their own. USA's Jared Shoemaker is here as part of his campaign for London 2012 selection. But as always in London, the Australians have the biggest foreign contingent. Here they have the powerful swimmers Kerr, Allen and Royal, backing up one of the pre-race favourites, Brendan Sexton, who's having the best season of his career with a fourth at the Sydney World Series race and a World Cup win at Monterey. Brendan, you've come a long way for this one. Uh, why so keen to compete here in London? Um, well, the, the competition's always great anywhere in the UK. I love coming over here. We've done a few races in the, the GE Super Series before. I think this year it was just uh, it's something, um, the hunger is, is much bigger for me at the moment. And it's, it's just, I, I really wanted to step up this year and sort of give the, the older guys a bit of a scare. A big challenge will come from the young Brits though. Matt Sharp is currently on top of the British Triathlon Super Series stock market with just two races to go. It's short, it's sharp, and you're leading the Super Series. Yeah, well, I'm really happy to be in this position and I'm hoping I'm going to have a good one here today and keep leading the series. We're looking out for Jared and uh, Brendan, the, the, the American and the Australian. Are those the two favourites in your mind, do you think? Mm, I think they're guys to watch, but our spirits are going pretty well as well, so yeah, we should give them a good run for their money. Aaron Harris is in great form after his second at Windsor, but keep an eye on Matt Gumby too, a talented 5,000 metre runner who has the speed to carve out a result on the short final stage here. Another former run specialist is Mark Buckingham. He's going in heat one and enjoying the prospect of triathlon on the big stage at Canary Wharf. And the supports, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. It, it's awe inspiring. Just just seen so many people already here, I mean, three hours before the race, and there's, there's more people at this event than I've seen at any other so far. And we've still got three hours to go, so uh, yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Um, what a great atmosphere, it's, it's such a good idea. The men's final will kick off at 9.30. The first heat hits the water at 6.15. James Locke is straight to the front, a great chance to make a name for himself in front of the crowds enjoying the bars, the beautiful evening and the racing. Alan of Australia takes first place in transition one. And behind him, Brendan Sexton is safely out with the leaders, showing the typically Australian preparation that helped bring success for Erin Densham in the women's event. Super Series leader Matt Sharp is safely in the lead pack, though, 
as is Mark Buckingham, who recently raced another short format event in Germany, where he used a technique that sacrifices a little bike speed for faster times in changeovers. The transition is going to be huge today. The race that I did last week in Munich, I tried something different. I tried not just riding on the bike with my run shoes. It made a massive difference last week and I won the race and um, you know, I'm sort of contemplating doing a similar thing, so we'll, I'll maybe try it in the heats and see how it goes. Could he repeat the trick in transition two here? Let's find out with your race commentator, Patrick Winterton. So into T2 for the first heat and Buckingham starting to make a move. Everyone with their eyes on him just to see whether he can just get an advantage by having the running shoes on as opposed to the cycling shoes. And certainly he's quicker down into T2. He'll be quicker through the transition as well. And you could argue that he gained coming out of T1 on that running section as well. So good thinking from Buckingham. He's stolen the lead and that should give him easy qualification for the final later on today. Sexton a little bit slow with the shoes, but he's safely in the top eight and it shouldn't be any problem for the top Australian to qualify. Buckingham's decision had paid off in the qualifier, though a quick burst from Sexton made up the few seconds he had lost. In the final, those seconds might not be so easy to recover, but for now, both men were cruising to qualification. Sexton even taking the time to show his appreciation for some enthusiastic cheerleaders. The battle for the last qualifying slot was hard fought, but Sexton had only one thing on his mind, and it wasn't necessarily the final. In the end, the first two made qualification look easy. I just had to make sure that I had a good, honest run and don't want to do anything silly in the heats and not make it into the final. You like the course? Oh, yeah, it's cracking course. The, uh, there's some real tight corners on the bike, which you have to have your wits about you, but the, the crowds are awesome. I mean, this whole straight coming down here, it's just lined with thousands of people. It's brilliant. Sharp was also through in style. Kerr, Bishop, Christie, Milne and Locke also qualifying. Anyone else could only hope to make it as a fastest loser. The top seeds had been separated, though, with the USA's Jared Shoemaker racing in heat two. Arguably the fastest runner here, he was 2005 under-23 world champion and since then has notched up impressive results with a World Series win and a World Duathlon Championship. Jared, good to see you back here in London. Why have you returned for such a short, sharp uh, pair of races? Uh, you know, the opportunity to race Canary Wharf, I think, is the biggest thing. Uh, it's a beautiful setting. You know, this is the financial heart of London. And also, I want London to feel like a second home to me when I come over for our trials and then the Olympics later this year and next year. The most informed athlete in this heat might be the UK's Aaron Harris, though. Second at Windsor in the last round of the Super Series and gambling on the same shoe tactic as Buckingham here, he'll be one to watch. Distinctive in his white striped wetsuit, Shoemaker comes into this race looking to sharpen up ahead of the US Olympic trials. Off the pace at the start and looking in need of that race practice, he was a few metres behind at the first turn. Shoemaker may have had a bad start. He's over on the right-hand side as we look at it, but at least he's going in the right direction. Aaron Royal and Bo Smith are both going the wrong way and this is going to cause a little bit of chaos. They've got to go round clockwise. Well, they realise that, but the change in direction certainly will have lost them time, and it's caused a little bit of congestion behind them. The only man to gain from that situation was Jared Shoemaker of the United States, who had spotted the line and was nice and wide and out of trouble. In the end, the only casualties were some pride and a few swim caps. Aussie Aaron Royal leads into T1, but Shoemaker's experience in missing out on the melee keeps him in contention. Royal maintains the pressure through transition and an unconvincing changeover from Shoemaker once again hints at a lack of race readiness. Though once on the bike course, Royal was soon caught by a chase group that included Shoemaker, Aaron Harris and Matt Gumby. The bike ride was a frantic 15 minutes as they rode nine laps of Canary Wharf. 
but Cardwell leading into transition with a few seconds advantage. Aaron Harris, like Mark Buckingham, had chosen to cycle in his trainers. The expense was a slight loss of position and power on the bike, but the benefit in T2, executed perfectly here, was a few vital seconds that come the final could make all the difference on the 2K blast to the finish. There was more hesitancy from Shoemaker, but never any danger of him or Aaron Harris failing to qualify. Richie Nichols won the heat, but it was a formality for the leaders, and Harris had time to share some banter with fellow qualifiers Royal, Shoemaker and Gumby. We noticed that you were wearing your running shoes on the bike, and through T2, that got you from about sixth to second, so that was a good decision. Yeah, it was a good decision, but um, it slowed me up in T1, unfortunately, but I had to work hard on the first lap to get up with the, with, with the boys, but um, yeah, it pays for me to get out of T2 in a high position, so it's a lot better. So yeah, I'm definitely happy that I'm re ready for the final now. A confident-looking Harris threw easily, one of the 20 who would fight it out for the inaugural Canary Wharf title. After a short rest and a change of kit, it was time to assemble for the start. So here we go with the grand final 400 metre swim to start it off. And uh, I'm sure they'll get the direction absolutely right this time. Everyone looks cleanly away. The top swimmers we're looking for, well, Shoemaker certainly could make an impression, but he's losing ground on the near side with the black and white striped arms. Good swimming from the Australians, as you'd expect. Kerr and Royal blasting their way off the pontoon, and already they've opened up a two-metre gap over the rest of the field with some high-tempo swimming. Now, 25% of the field are made up by Australians, so that opens up an opportunity for a bit of teamwork. But I think these two at the front are just highly competitive and both trying to get one over on the other. There were no first-turn fisticuffs on this occasion, but this was how it stayed for the rest of the swim. There was no room for anyone else up front, with the Australians dominating all the way. Australia's Kerr and Royal are going to be the first two onto the pontoon, and it looks as though Alan, their teammate, is going to be third. So one, two, three for Australia coming out of the water, and now we go into T1. 4.32 on the clock, it's impressive swimming. Sexton and Shoemaker look to be between five and ten seconds down at the moment. The best of the English is Gunby. He's had a very good start and he looks strong in the qualifying. Ireland have James Locke on 440. Scotland with Cameron Milne, 441. Impressive performances, but it's the Australians out front and we can expect to see them lead onto the road. And it's Peter Kerr who has that lead going into phase two. Allen goes well. Where is Sexton? There he is, just leaving the transition now. And he's stolen a march on Shoemaker of USA, who's struggling with the wetsuit and certainly making life hard for himself. Buckingham, on go the running shoes, which he'll use for the cycle phase. It costs him at this stage of the race. Aaron Harris, the only other man employing that tactic, and they'll both hope that the advantage swings their way in T2. And from what we saw in the heats, that's exactly the way it will turn out. 10 kilometers on the bike, and it's Australia up the front of the field, pushing the pace and stringing them out, trying to take advantage of the fact that they just eked out a little bit of a lead on the first section. A little bit of chat between the Australians and Allen going through to take the lead for the first time today. Further back, Harris, you can see. There's Milne, Gumby starting to make a move. Gumby realizing that he's got to get on the tail end of that leading group if he wants a chance of winning today. And the sooner he does that, the better. It's a technical course. If he breaks late, he'll close the gap. That's exactly what's happened. Good riding from Gumby. Harris goes round the corner. He's made up a little bit of time since he came out of transition. The only names missing from the leading and the chasing group. Shoemaker, we've got Buckingham missing, and the winner of heat number two, Richie Nichols, also absent. They've paid the price for poor transitions. But the Australians loving every minute of this. Sexton makes his way to the front of the field for the first time and now starts to turn on the pace. 
and you can tell it's a hard pace because they're just strung out behind him, one after the other. We now have eight men up front, and these men have eight laps to catch them. It's Buckingham and Shoemaker trying to make the pace at the front. Well, they can see them in the distance. Shoemaker perhaps not having the experience that he was expecting when he put in his entry for the Canary Wharf Super Sprint. And the Australians really aren't making anyone's lives easy here. They are giving it everything at the front of the field. So they're out onto the bike course and some amazing teamwork going on between the Australians. Join us after the break for the conclusion of this Canary Wharf Triathlon. British Triathlon, proudly partnered by GE. Imagination at work. Welcome back to the heart of the city's financial district for this GE Canary Wharf Triathlon. We've already seen one title heading to Australia, Erin Densham taking the elite women's crown. And could the men's title also be going down under? Let's find out by rejoining your commentator, Patrick Winterton. Matt Sharp's got himself well positioned with just under two kilometres to go on the bike ride. And the English team also looking for Aaron Harris to pull the stops out on the run. But the Australians looking ominously dangerous. Shoemaker of USA, he might need a pacemaker if he keeps pushing as hard as this. It's a phenomenal effort from him, but he still hasn't closed on that leading group. And I'm not sure there's going to be much left in his legs for the run. Buckingham. Now, this is where those running shoes may pay dividends because he's going to be very quick through T2, and that might just be enough to close the gap on that leading group. We'll see soon enough. The Australians still up the front in numbers, but transition two is going to be more crucial than ever before. So far, so good for Brendan Sexton, who had Shoemaker exactly where he wanted him on the bike ride, off the pace in the second pack. The American had done everything he could to close down the gap, but ran out of laps, and Sexton was right where he needed to be at the front of the race as they headed into transition two. Sexton, Kerr, Royal for Australia, Harris, Gumby, Sharp for England, and of those six, Harris is the only man that already has his running shoes on, and that's a huge advantage to Aaron Harris. The chase group have closed on the leaders, but at what price? Because they've had to work so, so hard to do it. Smith, great race by Smith. Running is not his forte. He's a big, strong man, swims like a fish, cycles well, as we've just seen. Behind him, Sexton and Harris into T2 together. Slight delay there for Harris, but there are no shoes to change, and he's away. He's stolen a march on the rest of the field, and that could be a crucial advantage. Shoemaker struggling, as he did in T1. Buckingham is away reasonably quickly, and another delay from Shoemaker, and surely that's the Americans' chance gone. Harrison Smith now have the lead. The Australians are not going to have this all their own way without a huge amount of effort. 2,000 metres to run. Sexton, Buckingham joining the leaders. And that's, uh, that's a phenomenal move by Buckingham. Remember, he, along with Harris, one of only two men to cycle with the running shoes on. And I think uh, when we see this format again next year, it might be something that the majority do rather than the minority. Now, of the big runners, well, Sexton, Harris and Buckingham all run well, very smoothly indeed. Buckingham has worked the hardest of these three on the bike ride. He's produced the quickest cycle time of the day, and that doesn't come for free. He might come from a running background, but it's going to take a superhuman effort from Buckingham to hang on to Sexton and Harris with just 1,500 metres to go. An uphill surge from Harris soon after was too much for Buckingham, who would be dropping down the field for the rest of the run. Harris was in the lead and turning the screw on Sexton. One of these two would win unless one of the chase group, Sharp, Gunby and Royal, could bridge the three-second gap with one circuit, just a 1,000 metres left to go.
With a sprint finish for the title now inevitable, let's rejoin Patrick Winterton for the climax. 500 metres to go, and the victory will belong to one of these two men. Will it be Harris or Sexton? Harris, we know, does not have that much of a sprint. He got undone by Tom Bishop at Windsor in the last round of the Super Series. Sexton, we hear, has a good turn of pace. He's got to prove it. How much has he got left in the tank? He's been hanging on for the last 500 metres. Gumby in third, Royal and Matt Sharp going for fourth and fifth at the moment. There'll be a good sprint finish for the minor places. And the same story for first and second. Harris drives again, but Sexton, the Australian, still looks relaxed. He's still running very, very smoothly. Round the penultimate corner. Now the head starts to sway from Harris, and he just digs deeper and deeper and deeper. Round the final corner, and suddenly the move comes from Sexton on the inside. Harris hasn't got the legs to respond, and the Australian storming towards the line now. 50 metres to go, and the celebrations start a little early. Will Harris be inspired for a final effort? No, there's nothing left. So the Australian takes the win. Harris in second, a great run from him, and Gunby delighted with his third place ahead of Royal. An incredible run from Shoemaker to pull himself up into fifth. That's only 10 seconds separating the top five athletes here at Canary Wharf. Wow, double delight for the Australians. Erin Densham takes the women's title. And what a piece of showboating at the finish. You enjoyed that. Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, Aaron really gave it to me. There was a few parts here I wasn't sure if I could hang on to him, but. Um, yeah, I, I knew I had a good sprint in me, so if I could hang on to him to that last corner, I knew I'd give him a real go, so that was great fun. I love a good battle, and when it comes down to the line like that, it's, it makes it all that bit sweeter, just because, you, you know, you're pushed right to the end, so uh, that was great fun. I haven't had that sort of atmosphere for all, ever. What do you make of this format and the setting? It's been quite a special night, really. It is, it's amazing. The, the crowd was just unbelievable i didn't i didn't imagine that there'd be this many people out to watch it and a night race is something i've never been able to do and it's not really possible in any other location so i, I thought it was an amazing event and hopefully it continues aaron i can see you're absolutely exhausted that was a fantastic race to watch yeah that was awesome that's one of the best races i felt brilliant on that just seemed to get picked by an aussie this time but yeah, second on home soil, so pretty happy with that. Well, we know you've got a run background, but where did that come from? Yeah, no, I don't know. I've uh, I had a bit of a shocker at Windsor, which I was kind of expecting. I'd had a fair bit of illness, uh, so I just put my head down and trained really hard. And so I don't know where that came from. I just felt one of those days where you just feel great. Sexton said he wanted to step it up, and he's done exactly that here in London, taking the win ahead of Aaron Harris, who really does boost his position in the Super Series. Gumby in third. Further down, Mark Buckingham, he started so well, put in a fantastic ride, but didn't have anything left down in 10th. And looking at the standings, it's Harris now who tops the table with 260 points ahead of Matt Sharp. And what a finale we're going to have at the XL Arena because any one of six men can still claim the title for 2011. Well, it's one of London's most iconic landmarks and as such, the perfect backdrop to this first triathlon here at Canary Wharf. A brilliant win for Brendan Sexton for the very last round of the British Triathlon Super Series. We move just round the corner for the biggest swim bike run event in the world, the Virgin Active London Triathlon. In the meantime, from everybody here at the wharf, bye for now. British Triathlon, proudly partnered by GE. Imagination at work.